guys, it's Jessie here. So in my last video, we talked about someone who claimed himself to speak perfect Chinese, but it turns out he doesn't. Today, I want to tell you guys about this guy who actually speaks perfect Chinese. I found him just randomly the other day. I was just scrolling down the videos, then his video popped up. At first, I was like, huh, lip sync. He's pretty good. But then, after like 10 or 20 seconds, I realized, oh my god, that's him. You know, I do know a lot of foreigners who speak really good Chinese, but none of them have ever made me this surprised. Because it doesn't matter how good their Chinese is. You know, when I close my eyes, I can still tell they're not native speakers. They still have this kind of exotic accent. But this guy, when I close my eyes and just listen to him speaking, I actually thought that some Chinese guy speaking. I cannot tell his like American accent. Oh, he's American by the way. Not at all. Okay, you know what? Let's just let's just watch his video. 大家好,我是曹子 See? What did I say? You can tell his Beijing accent from his Erhua in like Xia. And how he pronounced these words? 告诉。告诉。就是。在中国也就是就是就是。So basically, the major difference between Beijing accent and standard Mandarin is that they curve their tongue a lot more than standard Mandarin. Like if it's the first time in Beijing, you would probably feel like everyone's speaking like. He speaks with Beijing accent, not standard Mandarin. Oh, I might need to explain the concept of standard Mandarin. Because in English, there's no standard English. There's American English, there's British English, there's Australian English or Canadian English. They're all correct, right? No one's gonna say, oh, you speak so standard English. But in Mandarin, it's a different story. The government has a whole system to make sure there's a correct pronunciation for every sound, every character, and every word. There is also Putonghua proficiency test. There are three levels and six grades. If you want to work as a Chinese teacher or an anchor or a broadcaster and stuff like that, you have to pass the test and reach at least level one. Cao Cao is not speaking standard Mandarin, he's speaking with Beijing accent, which is Beijing dialect. But for me, I feel like as long as you make people think you're a 100% native speaker, it doesn't matter which dialect you're speaking. It doesn't matter if it's Beijing dialect or if it's Sichuan dialect, Chongqing dialect, or any others, then that's perfect, at least for accents. But did you notice that he speaks rather slowly? You know, at first I was like, maybe that's just his way of speaking. You know, some people speak really fast, some people speak really slowly. And then I found a podcast of him speaking English. And it was actually really difficult when I when I first started. I mean, I remember my first day of Chinese classes. The teacher couldn't slow down the class just for stupid old me, right? So it was really hard. <laughs> You know, I was taking some pretty difficult classes at the time. So when it came time to take the final exam, I, you know, I knew I was going to fail. See, he speaks really fast in English, but really slowly in Chinese. It doesn't affect the fact that his Chinese is really good. And I really like something he said in the podcast. Most people are who they are, regardless of where they are. Their, their own personality weighs much heavier than where they grew up. I mean, it's a combination, but, but, you know, people's personality shines through always. And there are really some useful information in the podcast. So um, Cao Cao, his English name is Jonathan. He shared his own experience of learning Chinese from scratch, why he wanted to learn it in the first place, the stories after his move to China and his life in China. It's really interesting. I put part of it in this video and you can watch the full version in the link in the description box. Personally, I just find it really inspiring. I mean, if he can do it, you can do it too. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. I'll tell you how, how I learned Chinese. I mean, other than just like, you know,
going out with women, talking to my buddies. Uh, I had a tutor right. every day. I, I, I paid a tutor to come talk to me for an hour a day. Mm. And I, I just basically, I paid my tutor to listen to me talk about my day. Because when you, like, if, if when you first get to China, or, you know, any foreign country, but just say China, right? When you first get to China, it, and you want to say, today, this morning, I was hungry when I woke up, uh, but I didn't know where a restaurant was. And so I went downstairs and I got a cab and I told him to take me somewhere where there was good food. And he, uh, and he did, right? When you mm. first arrive, that's difficult to say. And so if you just try to tell your tutor that and you know, you're going to encounter 20 words that you don't know how to say and your tutor will tell you how to say them. And, but the important thing is the next day you tell your tutor about your day again. The next day you tell your tutor about your day again. And the point, the point being, okay, you're going to use the same words over and over again because they come from your normal life. And, and the words mm. that everybody needs are different. You know, the words that I need as an actor are different from the words you need as a podcaster. You know, I have no idea how to say podcast in Chinese, but I can tell you how to say continuity error. Mm. That's very interesting. And the thing that makes you remember words is using them. Once you use a yes. word three times in a conversation, it's yours forever. Yes. But if you memorize it, you'll remember it maybe for a day maybe two days. Mm. At best, you'll remember it until the test. But after the test, you'll forget it if you don't use it in a conversation three times, in three Absolutely. different conversations. Um, and so what happens is in, when you're learning a language in a, in a school, right, the, the, the school book or the teacher will make you memorize words. You know, like you memorize peach, apple, pear, banana, plum, cherry, grape, right? Mm. And if you're good at memorizing, you'll, you'll remember them, but you'll forget them pretty quickly. Not only that, but it's boring. But if you, if you just tell your tutor about your day, which is what I did, for a year, basically, um, you'll use words that come from your life. You will use them not only the next day when you're talking to your tutor, but you'll use them just in every, your everyday life because precisely because they come from your everyday life. And it's not boring because mm. you, you get to talk about real normal stuff with your tutor. And, and not only that, Chinese is, is just for this method, okay? Chinese is extremely suitable. And the reason is... Chinese vocabulary is hard, but the grammar is easy. If you take a language like, you know, like German or French where, where the, or, or Russian, where the grammar is pretty difficult, you actually have to spend some time outside of conversation just learning the structure of the grammar because, you know, with all the conjugations and the tenses and stuff, it's just difficult and there's a structure to it. But Chinese grammar is, is super easy. There's no tense. There's no conjugation. There's no gender. I go, he go, she go, we go tomorrow, yesterday, you know, in the past. So... The only hurdle for Chinese is the vocabulary and the pronunciation, both of which are super difficult because mm. there bas there's basically no cognates in Chinese. I mean, Spanish, you know, it's like 60% cognates. Chinese, there's like eight words, you know, hamburger, hambabal, sofa, shafa, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. That, I mean, in like, eight, you know, 10 more maybe. That's it. Yeah. Um, and because it's tonal, the pronunciation is really difficult. But that's what just talking to someone helps with is – grammar and pronunciation. And, and honestly, when people ask me how to, how to study Chinese, that's what I tell them. And I think that I, have sh I should have some cred, right? Because I speak pretty good Chinese. But mm. that's the response that I always get, your response, which is, hmm, uh, I speak Chinese really well, and I learned it that way. And I know that's a good way to learn it. And I know that if people would try to learn it that way, they would learn it better than they do. Every time people ask and I tell them, that's your response is exactly the response that I get. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just really curious how you learned your pronunciation because your pronunciation is really good. I'm sure you must be like doing a lot of practice on that. Otherwise, how did you achieve near native pronunciation? Uh, it's probably a combination of two things. I cared about it a lot. Like I, it's, I enjoy the process of, of copying people and sounding how they sound. But also the reality is there's genetic luck involved in that. <laughs> No, it's just reality. Some people are good at learning accents and other people are not. And it's like, I mean, it's like being pretty, right? Some people are born pretty, some people are not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can, you can put on some makeup and you can go from a 6 to a 7.5 or an 8, but you can't go from a 4 to a 10. Mm. So apart from Mandarin Chinese, do you speak any other foreign languages? Nope, just Chinese. I'm learning Spanish now because I'm, I'm moving to Spain. Right. Interesting. So you've basically been just practicing with native Chinese. 
And yeah, I mean, my, my, you know, I work on Chinese movie sets, right? And so there's not a lot of time to screw around. So I have to, my, I mean, my Chinese, my fluency has to be perfect, basically. Mm. Uh, they don't have time to explain things to me. Yeah. Not to say that I speak Chinese perfectly. I mean, I speak English better than I speak Chinese, and, and I don't speak Chinese like you never ever speak a foreign language at a totally native level, right? Mm -hmm. But I speak it pretty well. So, did you spend a lot of time practicing apart from just you know having a tutor and talking to your roommate? No, and that's the point. I didn't have to spend a lot of time practicing because my whole day was naturally practicing. Mm. My whole day, every day, was naturally practicing, and that's kind of the point. People are lazy, right? And mm. everybody has this experience. Like, you know, you study really hard the first day, you study even harder the second day, and you're so proud of yourself. Oh my God, I'm such a hard worker. And you say on the third day, wow, I'm such a hard worker. I deserve a break. And that's the end of it. But, mm. and, and so the point, the, the, you know, the recipe for success when you're studying something is to find a way that you'll learn it anyway, even if you're, ev ev even assuming you're lazy. And so that was why I organized my life that way so that I wouldn't have to ever make a decision like, am I going to study today? Because after a few days, of course, the answer is going to be no. But one thing I did that was really useful and probably the thing I did that was the most useful and is the reason that I speak Chinese as well as I do, or is probably the reason I speak Chinese at all, let alone as well as I do, is because I, when I was on the plane over, I, I made a pact with myself. And that pact was I was going to speak only Chinese for the first mm. four months that I was in Beijing. Yeah, and it was hard. You know, uh, it was hard, and it was hard on a couple levels, right? I mean, number one, mm. it was just, it was, you know, logistically difficult because I spoke Chinese really badly, and, and you know, to just ordering food and finding a bathroom was difficult. Mm. But... It was also lonely. Any of yes. your audience who plans on, you know, going to China and, and if they, they want to be fluent, if you're only speaking a foreign language, you go to a new country, you're having new experiences, it's, it's this big, incredibly exciting adventure in your life and you're learning new things and your eyes are opening up to the world and you want to talk about it like you do. I mean, it's, you know, you, know you, like you, you have a new experience, you talk to your buddy about it, right? Mm. But my Chinese was so bad that I just like I literally couldn't get the words out of my mouth because I didn't know how to say them. And so all of this stuff, this ferment that was occurring in my mind, I, I couldn't talk about it. So it was sort of it was locked up in my head, which is pretty lonely, but also uh, very motivating in, in making me want to learn how to, to talk. But and third, and this was weird, this I didn't expect. Um, when you when you go to a foreign country and you start to speak their language, you'll mm. speak it better. You sound like a child, and people will treat you like you're stupid, Be not because you are, but because you, you talk like a stupid person. You know, because in general, people just ju they judge you based on how you talk. Uh, mm. And if you talk like a five-year-old, people treat you like a five-year-old. I mean, even though if you press them and you said, well, you know, do you think he's actually stupid or, or just like speaks the language badly? They would probably say he's not stupid. He just speaks the language badly. But they, but still, unconsciously, they, they treat you like an idiot. And mm. so, I, I wasn't used to that. Um, but again, it was it was very motivating um, to force me to to learn. And but anyways, what happened was I ended up living with a Chinese buddy. Like I made a buddy there, you know, and and we got, you know, we became roommates, and and that was really useful because I because then just the everyday give and take about you know like you know, normal guy stuff, like talking about women, mm -hmm. uh, planning stuff. It was, you know, we had to do it all in Chinese, which just, so it became sort of just the everyday language of my, my normal life pretty quickly. And even though I spoke it badly, I improved rapidly uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, I met some new girl and I wanted to talk to my buddy about it and, and we did. And then, so I improved, you know, that, that you know, my level of Chinese improved right. rapidly. That was helpful. It was really helpful on two levels. Okay, number one, it was just helpful in a practical way. Like, it forced me to learn a lot of Chinese. Okay, mm -hmm. but it was helpful on another, probably more important level, which is that the worst thing 
that a person can do if they go to a foreign country to learn a language, say China, if they go to China to learn Chinese, the very worst thing that you can do is go take a Chinese class. Mm. It will guarantee that you never learn the language. And the reason is because the only place in all of China where there are no Chinese people is in a Chinese class. You know, it's all other foreigners. Not only is it all other foreigners, but it's all other foreigners who are super similar to you. You know, That's true. they left their home country. They are on an adventure. They are taking the road less traveled, blah, 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 right? So it's really easy to become really good friends with them because they're so much like you and they share so much of your worldview and life experience. And any one person can only have so many friends. And once your friend calendar gets filled up with people who speak your native language, then you don't have any room for like your local life, your Chinese life. And people who do that end up not making any Chinese friends or they make friends with Chinese people who speak English. And those people never learn Chinese. I have never met, not once in 20 years. And, you know, mm. maybe, maybe one of your listeners is an exception in the future. But I, in 20 years of living in China, I've never met someone who went and took classes and then learned the language. Mm. That's very true. For my experience, I'm a Chinese. I lived in Melbourne, Australia, and I learned my Chinese here. I mean, I learned my English here. And I do see a lot of Chinese traveling to Western countries. And, you know, there's a lot of Chinese outside. So it's so easy to make friends with Chinese rather than make friends with English speaking people. So that's what happens. You know, a lot of Chinese can't learn English properly because they always hang out with Chinese. Exactly. Chinese go to Australia and Jatwar and, and ex, you know, expats go to, to China and Jatwar and, and then they... You know, they don't venture out into the into the wider country and, and they don't learn the language. Just let me clear the word jadwar <laughs> with uh, our audience. It basically means gathering together, you know, basically, you know, a group of people just being together. Well, jadwar means it means like to to like stick with your own crowd, and, yes. you know, to the exclusion of, of, of everyone else. And so, you know, that's, that's what right. Chinese do. When they go anywhere. They make their own little Chinatown and jadwar and, and foreigners do the same thing in, in Beijing. And mm -hmm. I mean, in all of China. Yeah. Anyway, if you don't learn the language in the first year you'll, you're there, you never will. Mm. Because after that, your life kind of settles into a routine. It's only in that first year where life is chaotic and, and in flux enough and you're, you're reformatting, reformulating your life that you have an opportunity to learn the foreign language, you know, in China or, or in whatever other country you're going to go to if you go mm. to a foreign country after you graduate. Because after that first year, you, you've, you've sort of settled into an identity in that foreign society. And, and, you know, learning a language after that is so hard because your identity, and I'm going to use a word here. I'm going to use one curse word, okay? You just have to deal with it. <laughs> your, your identity for the first year that, that you're in a foreign country has to be shabi. <laughs> yeah, you, but it, you have to be a stupid idiot the first year that you are in a foreign country. You have to be that stupid guy who says everything wrong, struggles over his words, the irritating guy, the guy who insists on speaking the language that he doesn't speak well, even when other people speak his language. Because if you don't, you'll never learn it. It's, it's really simple. It's something that uh, that Confucius said, which is um, if I'm walking with three people, one of them uh, can teach me something. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot how to say it in Chinese. 三人行必有我师. Oh, there, 三人行必有我师. Exactly. And that, that's a really useful piece of advice from, I mean, if you really read Confucius, just like if you really read the New Testament or if you read the Quran, it, it's full of really good, really practical advice. And, and that's one of them. And mm. if you keep that Confucius lesson in mind, when you go to a foreign country and respect the local culture and, and respect the, you know, the, the, the accumulated wisdom of the culture, then you, you will gain knowledge and perspective and insight uh, from every interaction that you have with people there.